All right, welcome back my friends. I'm John and here we talk about all cars all the time. And this is my opinion channel. And today we're gonna to talk about Scion. This was a youthful brand established by Toyota trying to bring in younger buyers to get them into the Toyota family. Introduced in 2003, it was an almost unqualified success. But just 13 years later, they quietly closed the brand and brought the remaining models into the Toyota name. What happened exactly? I've never really given it a lot of thought, but uh, somebody made a comment on a video and I started thinking about it. I started doing some research and originally my thoughts were this was either corporate hubris, a company that thought they could push in a new brand and focus on a new market and it all just went sideways and also since it was focused on a youth market, what if the people they were targeting just aged out of their cars? Well, it turns out, I think the answer is both. So let's discuss it today. All right, so again, Scion was launched in 2003 with two cars, the XA and the XB. Now, basically what Toyota was doing was taking Japanese market cars and doiling them up and bringing them to America. And their premise was pretty simple. You had a low price, no trim options, lots of customization, and they promised the dealers what was gonna happen was in exchange for lower profit margins was a much faster turnover in design to keep it fresh. They used what could be described as guerrilla marketing, a lot of advertising that directed people to websites, things like that, and they really sold themselves as cool and hip and in their views, a little gritty. They started in 2003, by early 2004, they were nationwide. 2004, they also introduced a third model, the TC, a little coupe. And by 2006, they were selling 173,000 cars a year. And that was the high point, three years after introduction. Now, the logic behind Toyota doing this was really simple. The best information I can find is from 2007, but the average age, the median age of a Toyota consumer was 54 years old. And I remember there was talk that Toyota was becoming the Japanese Buick. And so like most manufacturers, they wanted to push down and try to find those younger buyers. They actually tried before this, this odd marketing plan called Project Genesis. This dated back to 1999, and they were taking what was the Toyota Echo economy car, the MR2 and the Celicas, and as far as I can tell, marketing them together to more youthful people and basically it just didn't work. Within a couple of years, they canceled the whole thing and refocused and decided they needed to launch a whole new brand. So the idea would be that you're young, maybe fresh out of college, whatever, you're kind of hip, and you would come into the Scion brand, appreciate how good it was, and then naturally move up to Toyota when you wanted a bigger, nicer car. Sounds familiar. This is exactly what the American manufacturers did when they cobbled together all their brands. General Motors was structured like this for decades, that you would come in as a Chevy and move your way up until you ended up in a Cadillac. And Scion, when they released, was pretty successful. People loved their cars. They were a little funky. They did things like they had the speedometer in the center of the dashboard and things like that but they were really well reviewed and people loved them because they were light and they were nimble and tons and tons of space. Toyota actually thought the XA, the more uh, rakish hatchback was gonna catch on, but actually it was the XB that was the strongest seller. By the second year, they were selling 47, then 54,000, then 61,000. But very quickly, Toyota went off track. In 2007, they replaced the XA with the XD, and then the XB was replaced with another version. Sadly, both of those cars lasted for seven and eight years without a redesign. Remember, their goal was to have constant improvements to keep the cars fresh. 
We're going to come back to the redesigned XB because 2007, just four years after Scion was released, is really the start of the downfall. In 2012, they introduced the iQ, a short, tiny little two-door, which you would recognize as the Toyota iQ. They sold that from 2012 to 2015. In 2012, they also introduced the FRS. Now, the TC had been a relatively strong seller for them. I guess they thought by adding another sports car, they would expand their market share. And of course, the FRZ was, excuse me, FRS was designed with Subaru, which sold it as the BRZ. But what happened is the FRS seems to have started cannibalizing from TC sales. It didn't expand, they just ate in on themselves. In 2014, they had the IA, and then 2015, they added the IM, which is really just a hatchback Corolla. The IA is actually a Mazda 2. In 2016, they slowly just canceled everything and rolled everything in under the Toyota name. In fact, if you try to look up Scion right now, you find this website, which says it's now proudly part of the Toyota family, but the Scion spirit lives on. What I really wanna focus on here for a second is the sales data and specifically what happened between 2006 and 2007. Now, if you remember, I said in 2007, the XB was redesigned. And at the time, it was second to the TC in sales. Now, there's a big downturn in 2008. And of course, we've got to take into account here that there was a huge financial downturn right around the world that happened. But they redesigned the XB, and I think it's fair to say it was widely unloved. I had a co-worker that had an original XB, and she loved it. And she was a middle-aged woman, so I'm not sure really the marketing was working there, but she loved it. For a small footprint, a tiny price, it had tons of space. The only thing she didn't like about it was on the interstate, that little engine had to work so hard, she really didn't get great gas mileage. But around town, it was great, great gas mileage, easy to park, great visibility and you could you know put anything you wanted to in it basically because it was shaped like a refrigerator but when they redesigned it they thought that more would be better they actually made it four inches longer in the wheelbase 2.8 inches wider and a foot longer so instead of being a small car all of a sudden this is much closer in size to the honda element more than anything else. That made this 582 pounds heavier. Their gas mileage went from about 27 down to about 22. And what's really frustrating is for all the extra mass, all the girth, the front seats actually were smaller. The back seat remained about the same. And the cubic footage, the storage behind the rear seats, eh, basically didn't change. Now, once you laid the seats down, it was a little bit different story. It became huge inside like a cargo van. But what they did is they sucked the life out of it. They sucked what made it fun. And I would argue that basically that set the stage. Toyota did what Toyota always does, which is take a car and constantly improve it, normally by making it a little bigger, making it a little heavier, refining it, and it killed what really attracted people to Scion to begin with. Instead of making it better, they just made it fat. And people didn't buy it. As you can see here in the sales data, in 2006 they sold 61,000. The next year they sold 45, almost 46. The next year they sold another 45, and then it dropped to 25, 20, and, and you know, basically stayed stable after that. I think that really identifies what was wrong with Scion. On the one hand, I don't think management really knew what they had. I don't think they really understood the market they were going for. They had the data to say these people want a low price, they want good fuel efficiency, they want customization, they don't want to haggle, but they want you know something that's great in an urban environment. But ultimately when they redesigned it, they didn't understand the market. The second thing I would say is that 
Toyota completely failed because the vast majority, I think I read something like 70% of Scion owners did not move to a Toyota. You know, much like uh, Oldsmobile ran into that if your dad drove, drove a, an Oldsmobile, you didn't want him to have one. That's the same thing Toyota's running into. So they were capturing these buyers, but they weren't translating in to being Toyota owners in the future. And there was a great interview I read where near the end, I think it was probably about 2012, 2013, something like that, they were talking about having to change their marketing. And the executive who did the interview had a great point. It was 10 years since it had been introduced and the market had changed. The, the people who were occupying the demographic they were aiming for had changed. They were still aiming for, you know, let's say 18 to 34, whatever that number was. And he drew, drew an example of if you started marketing a car in 1970, your marketing would be for hippies, right? No offense if you were a hippie. In 1980, that same brand, that demographic would have lived through Watergate, two different gas crises. It would have been a different mindset of the buying generation. And they tried to change that. But their cars, in my opinion, became heavier they became less fun, they became less funky, and in some cases, they just became cheap. Ultimately, Scion pulled the plug, rolled those back into the Toyota umbrella, and quietly let Scion fade off into the distance. It's not unfair to say Scion is the Toyota Saturn, you know, the GM brand, but what Toyota did that was smart was by taking other cars that they were designing in other markets, some of which were global cars. The Mazda 2 came here, for example. You know, the Corolla hatchback was a world car. It cut down their expenses, so it really was a marketing division more than engineering and manufacturing and everything else. So it kept their investment down much lower. They didn't lose billions of dollars like GM did, but it's not unfair to say they went off, they tried to create a new brand, and 13 years later, they just quietly let it fade away. I think that Toyota's hubris to believe they could do almost anything, to believe that they understood what young people wanted when they were manufacturers of cars that even the Corolla is really uh, attractive to old people because it's so efficient, right? They tried to be funky, and for a brief little while, they managed to do it. And while I'm thinking about that, it must tear them up to look at what Kia managed to do. Because that soul came out, it had a cool name, cool interior, funky hamsters driving it around, and Kia got the cool factor while Scion got canceled. Let me know your thoughts, guys.